Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to your favorite Monday show, Fish for Thought. Happy Monday, let's get straight into it. Fish tank. been getting so much backlash on my toilet tank fish tank that I regret to inform you I have to remove it so that I can install a bidet! Nice, nice. A little bit of a rage bait there. So this guy is actually making a flushable fish tank toilet fish tank. This guy saw crappy aquariums and took it literally. But here's the thing, I'm not mad at it because this guy's giving me actual professional vibes. This is a well-made video and it makes this guy seem like he clearly knows what he's doing, what he's about. I know what I'm about, son. And people who are like that, these honest professional people, they tend to actually not be animal abusers most of the time. And it turns out I was right because I did a bit of digging and I just went to their, probably their most recent update. There's a lot of posts on this guy's page. Check them out. Instagram handle right there. I don't know why I did not think of this sooner. About every other month, I need to do a deep cleaning on the fish tank toilet. The shrimp and snails are not enough to control the algae. And my wife has been getting on my case that this thing is starting to look disgusting. As you can see, he's added quite a few more things to it than the first video he showed where he's rage baiting the people saying, you can't put a fish in a toilet sump. He took that personally, he took that as a challenge and he made something actually designed be equipped with the proper husbandry. Bro's got a heater in there, sponge filter, live plants, anything you can think of that people might consider a proper fish tank needs. A credit card to clean it off because it's acrylic. It's also difficult to clean the- He's even doing maintenance on it. Scrubbing the glass. He's gravel vacuuming. Since I am using reverse osmosis water. Look at this, reverse osmosis water. It's recommended to add in some shrimp minerals and I usually- Cutting some lines. I don't know what that's all about. We're trying to tell us something. The only maybe thing I have with this is the odd shape. It seems very slender, very skinny. The thing is, there's only a couple of guppies that I can see and some shrimp. So even if it's a skinny tank, it has the best possible tank residence. You couldn't have chose better things to live in this tank. Would I recommend anyone do this? Not really. Would I recommend a slender tank with a weird dimension? Definitely not to anyone, except for maybe people like this. So when you flush this tank, it has this cool visual effect. The water's actually being flushed. What do you guys think? Is this a good enough fish tank for y'all? Is this passable in your books? In my books, because of the stocking in here, like one or two guppies, a couple of shrimp? Yeah, go ahead. It's so elaborate. It's so clear how much this guy cares. Probably cares more than the average fish tank owner. So if we're gonna say this doesn't work, oh boy, you know what I mean. That is a five out of five crappy aquarium. Hey fish fans, smash like now and support on Patreon so you get perks in return like joining the FFT Discord server and submitting your fish tanks for fish tank review by. Da Vinci sent in their 6.5 gallon ember tetra and shrimp tank. Wow, Da Vinci himself. River stones of all varying shapes and sizes. Okay, it's like one shape is round shaped. The wood coming straight out of the water, taking the scape to the next level. Anubia's Nana Petite, Limnophilus acelli flora, a clean rimless tank sand substrate, very understocked, something extra zen about it, I think it's because of the river rocks. 4.42 out of 5, keep it up. What is this? Is it bacterial film or a weird fungus? Holy cow, that looks like, I mean, are you, is this a spider enclosure? <laughs> it grows back a few days after a water change other than some mild algae, the rest of the tank is reasonably healthy. First time seeing this, you keeping fish or spiders? Damn son, <laughs> same. <laughs> Although that looks like a lot of spider web, it is not. So you do see this in other places actually in nature. Not saying that this is an effect that's sought after in the aquarium hall but it does happen in nature is all I'm saying. It's a buildup of organic materials that are left over as residue that are not being flushed out of the ecosystem fast enough so it congregates and especially in the surface. When an ecosystem or strip of the river or lake or pond is overloaded for some for whatever for some whatever reason by organics that have broken down maybe an animal died in here or very close to this area maybe there's a lot of fallen debris like fallen leaves dead vegetation and this is a side profile of the actual tank. It looks beautiful first of all but secondly putting on my Sherlock
Sherlock Holmes cap? The rock. It reminds me of live rock saltwater tanks. Is that perhaps what you are using here? Was it exposed to something? Does it have something living inside or does it have some biomatter somewhere along the rocks? Was it cleaned properly? Because that's a very interesting looking rock for the freshwater hobby, I have to say. Shroom Tobin sent in their 10 gallon betta fish tank. Shroom Tobin describes this betta as ancient. It is a black water tank. There's a lot of tannins being leached. There's botanicals being used, fallen leaves, outer cones. Very, very healthy for betta and a lot of other fish, especially if they are okay with a lower pH. So this is a crown tail betta fish. Not my first choice, although I have rescued my fair share of longer finned, massively bred betta fish. I would rather have a short fin. This way you can actually make your aquascape a little more complex. By the way, I'm just seeing the thick substrate. That's another good stuff. If you had a short fin, you could put in some interesting looking branches. I understand completely that you shouldn't here because it's a crown tail, it's a long fin. The branches could tear up these fins. For now a 3.9 out of 5, keep it up. Whatever happened to them? All right, so these are under gravel filters. You've probably heard it. If you haven't, filters have an intake and an output. The intake in this case is buried under all that substrate. Whatever substrate you're using, it's buried under there. And the output, you see how those tubes go up, water goes up and back into to the tank like that. I used to have one. That's actually what happened with my first tank ever. It's a blue one from Petcetera that closed down a long time ago. It featured an underwater filter. These are fine if you want to stick to inert substrates, but it, once you go into the nutrient-rich substrate area or if you even want to dirt your tank, these kind of aren't your best choice. It could really break the ecosystem in your tank. So what happened to them? Basically, this was ancient technology when we're talking about aquarium tech. Fish tanks have come a long way since then. Pop filters are just much easier to install, much more versatile, you have more control, you don't have to flip your fish tank upside down just to maintain them. And then comes sponge filters. You can literally take out the sponge filter, put it back, do whatever with it, throw it around like a football. Canister filters, some filters, all more versatile and easier to maintain and set up. Trunks Park sent in their 15 gallon dirted fish tank with CO2 injection. They got guppies, gourammies, tetras, Vietnamese minnow, so basically a fancier white cloud mountain minnow. Exclamation mark rasboras, so a true nano fish, kind of like the chili rasboras and a lot of shrimp and snails. This is actually quite a lot of stocking in here, uh, but to each their own, you know. Stocking is just a recommendation. You, there's no hard yes or no to stocking. And I feel like Trunks Park is making this work very well. Look at the beautiful plants. Oh, there's some window reflection. Always make your room as dark as possible before filming or taking a picture of your tank. That is photography pro tip for aquariums. However, even with the Horrible reflection. You can just see how amazing and beautiful this tank is. That's kind of speaking a lot to how good a fish tank looks. Trunks Park says a stocking app is saying that it's 150% overstock, and I kind of agree with that. I would say stop where you are. You got a beautiful tank. You got a lot of cool fish in there. If you want more fish, maybe set up another aquarium. 4.89 out of 5. Keep up the good work. How's my tank for my pet walleye? Got me there, bro. <laughs> You're not looking too well. Need some lemon and dill. Set grill for 450F. Too much space, and is that liquid I see in there? Walleye live in arid environments like the desert. This is blatant animal abuse. I don't know, man. This is essentially waterboarding. Jesus. Please don't waterboard Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Does no one do research anymore? Yeah, bro. I don't even think this is pre-salted. Bit cold. Warm it up about 300 to 400 Celsius. Really hope you meant 300 to 400 Fahrenheit. Yeah, bro is trying to cook with the surface of the sun right now. 300 to 400 degrees Celsius. Australian wit sent in their Oscar grow out tank. Very interesting. Uh, not my first choice of a fish tank dimension for an Oscar. They said the Oscar's not a jumper, but just just hold on, okay? Every fish is a jumper. Some tend to jump less, like much that day. Horrendous, where you wake up, you can't find your fish, and then you step on it. It's on the ground. Crispy. Crispy and crispier than your grandma's toenails. <clears throat> I do see that there is a jump guard on some parts of this tank, I believe. Not enough of a jump guard. You gotta get that puppy all around. It. Something really cute though. Apparently, this Oscar's favorite toy is that ping pong ball. I found two coolie fry and I'm scared. Why are you scared? That is one of the best things ever. Finding any fry in your tank, oh my gosh, I think it's so cute. I wasn't, I wasn't prepared. That might be the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. It's like a mini me. Oh, look at it. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's so cute. It's, uh. apparently bro is scared because they don't know how many of these small fry are in here and it might mess up their Water parameters? 
Bro, don't even worry. Enjoy it. You're living my dream. I wish my amazing coolie loaches as amazing as they are. Where are you? As amazing as they are, they're not having babies for me. Maybe I got two females or three females, or, but I'm so happy for you. Don't be scared. Enjoy it. If it gets too out of hand, you know, so be it. Crash. It's okay to have a few crashes. <laughs> what? I didn't know my shrimps offered this service. Can you please offer me this service? Oh, what I didn't know was there's glow quarries. <laughs> Oh no, what species of corridors is that? <laughs> uh, yeah, shrimp like to eat stuff from your fish. It, usually it's fine unless it's a macro uh, ghost shrimp. Quarries are probably not smart enough to evade uh, the pincers, the huge pincerinos on a macro stoma ghost shrimp, whatever it's called. Cherry shrimps, not gonna be an issue. Some of my cherries clean my coolie loaches like this as well, so yeah, should be all right. <laughs> I am an expert. Clearly not. Don't trust what I say about anything, including that sentence, because I am an expert. Bug bite acquired, landing gear deployed. That is a cool looking bed of fish. All right, acquired the bug bite. Ah, the infamous bed of landing gear, the Mars Rover, the Splendens Rover, baby. That is super cool. Ah, I just love that. It just deployed immediately. Them, FedEx is not that bad. Fish shipped with FedEx. No, what in the scoliosis? This one got me. It makes no sense, but the visual effect, you know. Flood aftermath, take one for your tank. Boy, would I love that. Now, you see how big these monster common plecos can get. I bet half of those are still alive. Water is apparently optional for plecos. True. Honestly, I can only describe them as ridiculous. It's crazy just how resilient they are. Unfortunately, that also makes them the perfect invasive species. And this is what we have here. How can an ecosystem thrive when there's a monoculture of pleco? This flood is like mother nature trying to get rid of its disease. Not saying that plecos are a disease. If they are, humans are the ones causing it. Don't flush your toilet. Don't flush your toilet. Don't flush your fish down the toilet. Even if it's not alive, it can introduce pathogens that your local ecosystems are not aware of or cannot take care of. A handful of shrimp, they crave that salty human flesh. I didn't need that commentary, but very cool. I felt this before. Exfoliate. I want to put my whole body in there so that it, they can exfoliate all sorts of parts of me. <laughs> Is that too much to ask? I just want a good exfoliating session, like a spa sesh, okay? And they get to eat probably a lot. Your boy needs a lot of exfoliating. Don't ask me why. The most obese fish I have ever seen. Bro has stopped, you know, swimming. We're just happy right here. Aquarium with bricks. That's quite a bold description of what is happening here. Try to make something else with your life. I know you can do it. It just needs more leaves. Right. Yes. Now, don't get me wrong. Katapa leaves and healthy tannin leaching leaves are beautifully amazing for better health. But when we have something like this, the last thing you even need to worry about is introducing tannins into this thing. Unless it's like a hospital tank, a little stay over, your better fish is struggling on his last legs, not eating. So you isolate them, try to feed them, try to get the tannins up, antibacterial, antifungal properties. But if it's their permanent home, the last thing they need is some tannin filled water because the first thing they need by a long shot, very low hanging fruit, is a bigger space, which you can very clearly, very easily provide your bed of fish. You just don't want to. Salmonella. I don't find this funny, but I have to give them credit because I've never heard or thought about that. Even though I feel like it should be pretty obvious to me. After all these years, this has never occurred to me. Hey guys, welcome back to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please show some love by not doing anything in particular, but just sending me some brain waves that you like it. I'm, I'm receiving it right now, thank you. Before I let you guys go, here's this week's Gotwa. Trying to play games with my wife. No, not like, I'm not trying to play, I'm not here, I'm not out here playing dog. I'm trying to play some MMORPGs <laughs> with my wife or anything, you know. We went through It Takes Two. That was an amazing co-op game, I love that. We play some Vampire Survivors, you know what I mean? Currently we're playing Children of Morta, but I kind of want some kind of RPG MMO experience where we can both work towards a goal on separate accounts, separate computer systems, you know? Her computer is not that like good. She's working with like a Asus Zenbook looking thing. I'm not exactly sure what model it is. I don't think it has 
a dedicated graphics card, so nothing too extreme. We're not trying to play Elden Ring together. Online MMORPG, I've looked into Guild Wars 2. I might give that a try, but let me know. Let me Give me some recommendations. Also just taking other co-op, couch co-op recommendations like Children of Morta. We've tried Diablo 3. We've tried Warframe. I'm mastery level like 25 on Warframe. I'm, I'm a master, you know what I mean? But I've grown so tired of that game. <laughs> there is no end game. Where's the end game? Where is it? I'm a coolie lo looking for the algae wafer that doesn't exist. All right. If you enjoyed this episode, please smash and uh, don't forget to get your hands wet. <laughs> Tetra, 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 we in a spot coming in hot. Ventral fin die, acclimate that. With my shoal at, cure my fin rot from Carisiformes to Peretrorodon. Hold on, there's not another fish that you can wish for. Live fam says, I finna one. I finna gone three days without fur. I'm an addict, like fanatic. I'm a baddest, no tabs, only dirt. My Cory gang so loyal, black Tetra go skirt. We came to play, came to silence. Gang.